Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. Okay, listen up. At 1700 hours, we got reports of a robbery at the Fire Pit Podcast offices. They're an incredibly influential podcast, or so I'm told. So this gets top priority. Now we got a special investigation team coming down from the 64th precinct. Now I'm going to go ahead and let them introduce themselves. Detectives, you got the floor. All right, listen up, dirtbags. I'm Detective Dan, uh, uh, Detective Policeman, and we're here to investigate and recover this stolen piece. I'm going to direct your attention to the screen, and you're going to see what we're looking at. In case you were wondering, yes, this is to scale. Also, this is the only picture we have, so be sure to memorize it as best as you can. Can't you just make copies? No. We're breaking this operation into three teams. I'll be leading the Alpha Patrol Logistics Operations team, and we'll be heading to the intersection of 64th and Broadway to investigate the crime scene. I'm Johnny McLean, and I'll be... Wait, are we splitting up? I I thought we were going to be staying together on this. And I'm Josh. Uh, Policeman. Josh Policeman. Josh, that's Dan's name. We're brothers. You don't look anything alike. So I'm going to be leading the uh, Bravo PLOT, and we're going to be uh, heading down to the lab to process some evidence that's already been brought through by the preliminary forensics team. Okay, and then I will be going with Dan? No, Tom will be on the C-plot. He'll be heading to the Riggs Hotel to investigate the homicide. Homicide? Wait, what's that? So nope, that's the 411 on the skinny. Are there any questions? Yeah, one. Why are you wearing fake mustaches? Actually, two. Are you even real cops? Listen here, constable. Uh, patrolman. Ah, uh, patrolman. You better show me some gosh darn respect or I'll have your muster flipping badge and gun. Uh, yeah, you can't do that. I'm a loose cannon. I play by my own rules. I'm getting too old for this shit. Hey, not. You, you're younger than me. I thought I gotta be the old cop this time. I'm gonna ask again. Are you real cops? Hey, yo, just look, just let him have it, Frankie. Just just let him have it. All right. Well, you guys got your orders. So get out there and bust those stones. Leave no heads unturned. And yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Gentlemen, we are on an adventure. First, we're going to flood the city with blue, with Chadwick Boseman and 21 Bridges. Then it's going to get chilly with Keith Davey and The Thing. But then after that, we buddy up with Kurt Russell. Welcome to America! And Tango and Cash. Here's where it gets different. We take Sylvester Stallone and Nighthawks. And then we'll try to figure out who's who. Don't please pay attention. With Rutger Howard and Blade Runner. And then put on your hats as we take Harrison Ford. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Hike up those boots and crack those whips, because the fire pit is swinging into adventure. Follow Dan, Tom, and Josh as they race the skies and follow the dotted lines to the X that marks the spot of this journey. Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's danger. It's deception. But hopefully there won't be any snakes. Every Tuesday, here... At the fire pit. Gentlemen, I hope we live to tell the tale. Good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome back to the fire pit. I'm Dan, Iowa Nigel, and welcome to the first episode of the third season of season two. I'm excited. This is shaping up to be a fun one with some real bangers for films leading up to 1981's Raiders of the Lost Ark as the fire pit swings into adventure. Now, as per our rules, we've taken an actor or actress from our last film and moved them on to this one. Now to tell us about who we're watching and what we're watching to start us off for the next six weeks, I send things over to Tom. Thank you, Dan. I'm Tom New Hampshire Thompson. And last time out, we saw Alan Tudjik, um, say things to Chadwick Boseman in 2013's 42 Chadwick plays the role of legendary and groundbreaking baseball player Jackie Robinson in that film, 42. But tonight we'll see Chadwick play Detective Andre Davis 
in 2019's 21 Bridges, the prequel to 42. What? No, it's not. How? Oh, hang on, Dan. I see what he's doing. It's because 21 is half of 42. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it makes, I mean, oh, wait. <clears throat> yes, I see it now. 21 Bridges. It's an action crime thriller set in the Big Apple. Because we've never had a movie like that before. But now to give us a rundown on tonight's film and a look at the box office, I'll toss the idol, but not the whip, to Josh. Well, thank you, uh, Thompson. I'm Josh, Kansas Reginald. And as mentioned tonight, we are watching 21 Bridges, starring one Chadwick Boseman, Sienna Miller, Taylor Kitsch, and J.K. Simmons, along with the Keith David. It was released on November 22nd, 2019, has a running time of about 100 minutes, and it had a budget of about $33 million, and it pulled in a box office of $49.9 million, with a Rotten Tomato score of 58% and an IMDb score of 6.6%. Wow, that's not good. Yeah, it was lower than I thought when I was looking this movie up. Yeah, wow. Yeah, it's uh, one of those ones that, uh, honestly, I saw the trailer for it. I was not intrigued at all. Okay, to go to the box office, it premiered at number four. Well, and when you hear what the number one movie was that particular weekend, you'll understand why. Anybody care to take a guess what the number one movie was that weekend? November of 2019. Yep, I'll give you a hint. It's a sequel to a wildly popular movie. Uh, <clears throat> wildly popular animated movie. Oh. Was I, it November 2019? Was it uh, Was it Ralph Breaks the Internet? Nope. Hmm. Wildly popular animated. Oh, they weren't making any other Cars films, and it wasn't a Shrek out. So, um... Oh, boy. I probably going to flip when you tell me but i do it was it was it frozen 2 it was frozen 2 oh yeah, yeah november 2019 yeah yeah frozen 2 premiered that weekend pulling in 130 million dollars and number 2 was ford v ferrari pulling in 15 million dollars so 115 million dollars less than the number 1 at number 3 <laughs> was a beautiful day in the neighborhood. The uh, Tom Hanks starring as Fred Rogers biopic. And then at number four was tonight's movie, 21 Bridges, pulling in $9.2 million. Uh, number five was Midway on its third week of release, pulling in $4.6 million. Other notables was... Okay, this wasn't a notable. Dan will have words about this one. was with Charlie's Angels reboot on its second week of release. Ugh, gross. <laughs> on its eighth week of release was Joker pulling in $2.7 million. Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, the uh, sequel to The Shining, Dr. Sleep, and the movie that we all love here at the podcast, Terminator, Dark Fate. Oh, yeah. We should make that a destination film. We really shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> But there wasn't a lot on that particular weekend, so it was a fairly slow weekend. But it ran from November to January, right before they shut down, like a month before, give or take. Because Bad Boys for Life was like, isn't that the highest grossing film of 2020? Because <laughs> nothing was releasing. Yeah, it was like released in January or February, like right before the pandemic hit. Yeah, well, its final week of release was when Bad Boys for Life came out. I'll, I'll have to double check these numbers. I didn't look into it, but Bad Boys for Life, I believe, was the highest grossing film of 2020 by default. <laughs> Fun bit of trivia, Josh. Um, Joker uh, was the last movie you and I saw in the movie theater. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. It's the last time we've been to the movies together. Yeah. Damn. It's been that long. Mm -hmm. I know the last movie that I saw in the movie theaters was Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, Josh, I'm sorry. Oh. Not a terrible film. It wasn't a terrible film. I enjoyed it. But to be the last film you saw, see before. It was the last film I saw at the theaters since before the shutdown. I haven't been back since. Yeah. Sonic's actually a good movie, though. It is. I enjoyed Sonic. But fun fact, 21 Bridges ended its box office run at 42 in the box office. Okay. there, There's some poetry there. Just a little yeah. bit. I. I would have liked to have seen it get more because this was, you know, the Chadwick Boseman film. But well, this was uh, still a way a long time before he'd passed. Um, he didn't die. When did he die? Was it uh... about a year later? He dies. He died on August 28th, 2020. So he died about a year after this movie or a little less than a year after this movie was released. 
Yeah, was it August? Yeah, it was August. My yeah. goodness. Yeah, I actually have it right here. It's in my trivia. Is he right. died on August 28th, 2020. But that's all I've got for the box office. So since Dan, you've got all this trivia, why don't you go ahead and uh trivia it up? I don't have a lot of trivia about this film, but I do have a little bit of trivia about the actors and actresses that were in this film. Uh, sadly, this is Chadwick Boseman's last theatrically released film before his death in August 28th of 2020. That is a damn shame um, because we did enjoy him in 42. And I think when we were talking about 42, we all universally agreed that he was awesome as Black Panther in the MCU. And from all accounts I've read, uh, his performance in this movie is pretty good. So seriously, this guy's star was burnt out way too quickly. Um, anyways, uh, fun bit though. The movie is called 21 Bridges. It was originally titled 17 Bridges, which actually would have been more accurate. There are not 21 bridges leading in and out of Manhattan. Only 17 are actual bridges. The remaining four are tunnels. Yeah, but 17 bridges and four tunnels doesn't really roll. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Although you got to save something for the sequel. Like you call the first one 17 bridges and the sequel's four tunnels. (laughs) No, I'm just saying. Like I said, the movie was originally called 17 Bridges, but they changed it to 21 Bridges because they counted the four tunnels. Those bridges include the famous Brooklyn Bridge, the Manhattan Bridge, Williamsburg, Queensboro, RFK, Willis Avenue, 3rd Avenue, Madison Avenue, 145th Street, McCombs Dam, The High, Alexander Hamilton, Washington Bridge, University Heights, Broadway, Henry Hudson, and the George Washington Bridge. The tunnels are the Brooklyn Battery, the Holland, the Lincoln, and the Queens Midtown. Anyone who's ever watched a show or a movie based in New York City has at least heard a character list all of those at one point in time. And listeners, I hope you're paying attention because you will be quizzed on this later. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so pay attention. Write them all down because I'm not repeating it. There's a $10,000 reward. There's not. There's not a ten. <laughs> there is, but it'll just be. We'll ship you Tom's credit card. Um, um. So, um. So, like the clown penis are uh, g- uh, uh, typically for life. <laughs> we really shouldn't Sh- sleep. <laughs> this movie stars two actors who played Black Panther. Chadwick Boseman obviously played him in the live action uh, Captain America 3, the Avengers films that he appeared in, and Black Panther. And veteran actor in the movie, Keith David, who plays the uh, deputy chief in the movie, was the voice of Black Panther in the 1994 Fantastic Four Saturday morning cartoon show. Why doesn't that surprise me? I didn't know that, but that doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me because Keith David is a phenomenal voice actor. and I can, He is. He really is. Yeah. And so, yeah, he was Black Panther in the Fantastic Four show. Or the Fantastic Four animated series in 1994. Uh, Chadwick Boseman is in this movie, obviously. And another actor, Stephen James, is in this movie. Chadwick Boseman played Jackie Robinson, as we know, in last week's 42. Uh, Stephen James played Jesse Owens in Race, uh, the movie that came out in 2016. Both Jackie Robinson and Jesse Owens were great athletes who became prominent symbols of the civil rights movement and integration of modern athletics. Nice. Oh, cool. Yeah. Also, fun bit of tri- uh, for me, Jesse Owens is from Ohio State. Nice, nice. Man, I, 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 oh, I had it up something about him too, because Jesse Owens. I know the movie's not about Jesse Owens, but if I'm not mistaken, Jesse Owens is the one that shunned Hitler. Yeah, he pissed off Hitler because he he won all the gold medals in the 1936 Olympic Games. If we ever get to that movie, yeah, there's a lot about Jesse Owens. Anyways, uh, I think that's all I had. There's some other bits that I'll go over as we're watching the movie, but um. Oh, we were talking uh, before we started recording tonight that the Russo brothers recorded this movie. Direct. We thought we thought they directed or it. Or directed it, I mean, but they produced it, actually. Well, they actually gave Chadwick Boseman the script for this movie as he was filming um, Avengers, not Endgame, but Infinity War. And they gave him the script for it, and Chadwick Boseman asked me, goes, wait, you're giving me another movie. Does this mean I'm really dead? No, <laughs> Mike. Oh. Like, he didn't know he, didn't know he was coming back for Endgame. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Because he. Yeah. He. He obviously got dusted at the end of End Endgame, or not Endgame, Infinity War. Spoiler alert. While they were filming that movie, the Russo brothers uh, gave him the script for this movie, and Bozeman joke, "I guess I'm really dead then, huh?" And the Russo brothers are like, "What do you mean?" He goes, "Well, I've given me another movie." So um, they, he didn't think he was coming back for Endgame. <laughs> that has a sad connotation to it now. Yeah. What sad in hindsight, I think the trope is. Uh, tragic in hindsight. Harsher tragic. in hindsight or tragic in hindsight. Yeah. Oh, man. That's funny, but now I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> it is sad. It really is sad. Like I said, he was a good actor. Good actor. Yes, he was. But I think that's all I really have uh, for this film. Um, 
Well, I think that leaves oh, me with... Yeah, go ahead, Tom. No, no, that's all I had. That's all I had. Okay. Oh, Josh, you were saying you had something before... Oh, I remembered something about it. I don't know if I want to spoil it or not. Oh. But it's a Star Trek connection. Because you, you probably know because you did the meta. I probably don't, but um, save it for the watch. Oh, it might I did have one more thing. I did have oh. one more thing. Sock it to us. Chadwick Boseman and Taylor Kitsch are in this movie. They have both been in Marvel movies and both played Marvel Comics characters. Boseman, obviously, Black Panther. Taylor Kitsch with Gambit in X-Men Old Origins Wolverine. Oh, oh nice. Yes, that, I was going to make that connection in the middle, but yes. That's all I have for trivia, and I promise I, that it really is all I have now. That's the end of my document. Um, and uh, I don't have much else except for what I might reveal as the movie goes on tonight. So, Tom, what can we expect out of this film? Yeah, well, real quick, I'm mean, I'm curious to actually no, yeah, save it for the watch, Josh, because I want to be surprised. If you don't, if you don't have it, um, it's not a, like a big spoiler or anything, but I think it's just something you'll be like, oh, he's in it type thing. Okay. So uh, yeah, yeah, I just I remember I just remembered he's in the film, and I think you guys are gonna get a kick out of it. All right, cool. I look forward to finding that out. But for now, let's find out a bit of the in front of the camera, behind the scenes meta on Twenty One Bridges. Tagline, the only way out is through him. Summary, an embattled NYPD detective is thrust into a citywide manhunt for a pair of cop killers after uncovering a massive and unexpected conspiracy. Is there ever really an expected conspiracy? I mean, it kind of... We'll probably take the fun out of being a conspiracy. Yeah, it's like if everyone sees it coming, it's not really much of a conspiracy. But general info on this film, this movie is kind of an original film. It is based on a story by Adam Mervis, by one of the writers, but um, it doesn't look like it was ever published into a book or a short story or anything like that. It's just probably like, hey, I got an idea for a story, guys. It's, again, it's a story about a cop who shuts down the aforementioned, well, as Nigel noted in his trivia, 17 bridges and four tunnels to find what ostensibly are a pair of cop killers and a little bit more to it behind the camera this movie was produced by a lot of people notably uh the russo brothers um also zhong yung yi wang we know the russo brothers uh, come on captain america avengers before all that they were mostly television surprisingly enough community a few indie films wang though um He's done a lot of shit movies. Some of the films we would know him from are Bad Moms and Hardcore Henry. And from what I've seen uh, in terms of the meta, it looks like Wang had more of an influence on the film than maybe Russo did. Because he has influenced a lot of films. But the writers of this film are Adam Mervis, who came up with the story, and Matthew Michael Carnahan. Mervis only had like two films under his belt, and both at the higher end of indie, and they looked interesting, but Michael, or excuse me, Matthew Michael Carnahan, just nothing but high budget schlock, action and drama, um, World War Z, and Deep Water Horizon being two of his more um, <clears throat> infamous films he's done. So MMC having the script behind this, I think he had a lot more say in how the writing of it went. But thankfully, this movie was directed by Brian Kirk. And this is one of his first Hollywood films. He's mostly done television dramas going back to 1998. But the stuff he's done has been good. Early seasons of Game of Thrones, Penny Dreadful, Boardwalk Empire, essentially HBO Showtime TV shows with ostensibly Hollywood production quality. This Again, this is him moving on up into the Hollywood world, but at least we know he's going to be pretty darn good. And with the music, we have Alex Belcher and Henry Jackman. I mean, Belcher's only done one other film, and Jackman's done, like, Kong Skull Island and X-Men First Class. Mostly their music is just atmospheric, so we're not going to get any John Williams from this. It's going to be competent background noise. So that's what we have in the background. In front of the camera, um, there's a pretty decent-sized cast, but the major ones from the looks of it are Chadwick Boseman, J.K. Simmons, 
Keith David, Alexander Siddig, and... Oh, there's your Star Trek connection. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I did have it. All right. Of course, as Nigel's noted, as the protagonist is Chadwick Boseman. It's Andre Davis. Uh, he's kind of a character actor, best known as, you know, Black Panther. Also was in 42, uh, Marshall, Gods of Egypt. A pretty good character actor whose, whose star was rising. As the female side character, possible love interest, we have Sienna Miller as Frankie Burns. Actually quite a decent resume. Um, ups and downs. Um, she was in American Sniper. Uh, she played the Baroness in G.I. Joe. I think she's also in one of the Resident Evil movies. I think she's Claire in Resident Evil. Is she now? I think so. I, I, I don't know. It's been a while since I've seen those movies. And I'm not in a hurry to get back to them either. Yeah, I mean, some of her films she's been in, like Layer Cake, were pretty decent. But yeah, uh, the movie she's been in are very, of varying degrees of quality. For the antagonists in this film, we've got Taylor Kitsch, Stephen James, and Gary Carr. I'm not going to go into too much detail on this, as their roles don't look like they need that kind of nuance. Kitsch really had the biggest uh, career of the three villains, Battleship and John Carter. Uh, he played the leads in both of those movies, but everything else these guys have been in kind of been schlock. Except for Carr. He did the voice of Liam Costa in Mass Effect. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm not expecting a lot of nuance from these guys' performance as bad guys. Uh, and supporting cast, we have J.K. Simmons, Keith David, and Alexander Siddig. All of them pretty solid actors. Uh, J.K. Simmons always plays J.K. Simmons, just with the volume up or down. Best known as J. Jonah Jameson. Uh, uh, Keith David, the voice of Goliath and Gargoyles, also was in They Live. He's Keith David in every Keith David film he's in. But with a voice like his, what more do you need? And Siddig, we know as Dr. Bashir from Deep Space Nine. Also a character actor who's been in films like Reign of Fire, Kingdom of Heaven, and as Ra's al Ghul in um, Gotham, that TV show. So I expect that he's going to be playing a character in this one. But aside from that, there's nothing behind the scenes of note. No accolades, no drama. So the over-under of this film, this is a movie with a known actor with reliable surrounding talent helmed by a seasoned TV miniseries director who stuck working with a generic screenwriter and influenced by a generic producer, but who's likely going to go on to bigger and better things from here on out. So that's that's kind of the meta there, guys. And now that we kind of know everything that's gone on with this film and gone into this film, ooh, Nigel, what are you expecting from this film? I'm expecting a solid but not spectacular police procedural movie. I, I don't know. I've been wanting to see it. I've been wanting to see this movie for a while. So I'm kind of, and what's one of the reasons why I had this movie as both a jump off point from 42. And I think I had it on a list or two going into 42 as well. So I've been wanting to see this film. I do like the Russo brothers, but they're producers, not directors in this film. So I'll take that with a grain of salt. I mean, it's 56% on Rotten Tomatoes. So I'm, I'm, I'm expecting a solid but not spectacular police procedural. Maybe an episode of of Law and Order or Blue Bloods or NYPD Blue with a slightly bigger budget, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> but I mean, that's OK. This, I, like, I do like those movies. Those movies do entertain me, but they don't really stick with me. Mm -hmm. um, they're just kind of movies that I like to watch in the background after I've seen it once or twice. So but that's that's really my expectations for the night. I'm, I mean, I'm expecting it to be a decent flick, but I'm not expecting it to be groundbreaking or earth shattering or anything like that. So what about you, Tom? I'm of the same opinion, honestly. Uh, it's, I'm expecting generic. I'm, I'm actually this this film kind of tastes like the bone collector which was a movie starring denzel washington and angelina jolie uh which you know denzel washington great actor and the movie was incredible in how underwhelming the whole thing was so i'm expecting that's what we're going to get here good lead character in a blase sort of film maybe a bit over the top in terms of the plot i mean shutting down an entire city to find um, some cop killers seems mm, but eh, i don't know if i come out of this not disappointed or pissed off i'll take it as a win but that i don't think i'm gonna be wowed by this film no reginald what about you 
Uh, I think Nigel's uh, expectations are going to be, I think they're going to be pretty well met. This is, I've seen this movie. I think I'm the only of the three who've seen this movie. I do really enjoy this movie, but I don't think it's anything majorly groundbreaking. I think Chadwick Boseman does an amazing job in it. It's definitely one that I have rewatched. I've seen this movie twice. So I just, I got the movie and uh, I just happened to uh, be, it was a slow Friday night and I'm like, you know what? I'll give it a shot. I ended up being completely entertained and enthralled by it. The whole it kept my attention the entire time I was watching the movie, which is something that I, you know, if I pay for a movie, I want that. Keep me entertained for two hours, and then you've made your money, you know. Yeah. And then obviously I went back and rewatched it again. I mean, it's a good movie because I re- I watched it once before Chadwick Boseman died, and I was really impressed by it. Mm-hmm. And then after he passed, I went back and rewatched it again because it's like a good movie that I really enjoyed him in. But it's nothing that's gonna like. Like, I'm going to say it's going to, like, redefine your visions on cinema or it's going to make you want to go out and become a cop or something. It's it's a good film. I really enjoy it. But it's not one that I'm, like, it's not in my top ten. Yeah, okay. So, basically, you're saying this is the movie equivalent of Chinese food? It fills you up while you're eating it, but then about an hour later, you're hungry again? No, because I still enjoy it even after I watch it. Oh, I mean, okay. if I compare this to other uh, cop movies, I still think this is one of the better ones. Okay. Um like I said, I, I told you guys that about for my first time watching through, I felt like I, I had about uh, the plot figured out about three quarters of the way into the movie. Okay. And uh, I, I kind of saw the, the twist and it wasn't anything that was shocking, but the way that they played it out and the way the movie ended, I thought was really fun and I enjoyed it. Um, I thought all the actors and act- or actresses was fantastic in it. I liked the progression. I didn't feel like it was slow. It didn't have a lot of wasted space in it. And it sounds like you didn't like, find anything wrong with it in subsequent viewings either no like i said i'm only rewatched it the one i was like today i was just like i was excited because i'm like i get to watch 21 bridges again so like i said i don't have any issues with this movie um i'm looking forward to watching it again for a third time okay well that actually um raises my um i'm not gonna say it raises my expectations but it does give me a little more hope like i said i'm not expecting a terrible film i'm expecting a solid but not spectacular movie that's what i'm saying it's i i think i'll enjoy it but i don't think it's going to be like it, it's definitely not going to crack my top 10 movies that i'm going to watch over and over and over again. so yeah yeah i think like, i'm expecting bland like you know kind of right. i think it's I, I think it's better than bland I, I don't think it's going to be the greatest meal you've ever had, but I think it's going to be like, you know, it's like one of your mom's home cooked meals versus eating at McDonald's. Okay. Well, that's, that's actually not bad. My mom makes pretty darn good meals. So yeah, like it's, it, even if it's, you consider it one of your mom's worst home cooked meals, it's still better than a meal at McDonald's. <laughs> that's a low bar. Yeah. But, uh, that's really, I guess my review of it. Um, there are other reviews. Are you guys curious to hear about them? I smell a segue. Well, as long as you don't die on it. <laughs> I'm not a mall okay. Cop. I'm not a mall cop. I don't have a segue. <laughs> well, now we're tra- you're going into Tom's favorite film. So tonight we've got the quiz because I uh, almost hit a perfect game last time, almost, but not quite. But it still was enough to warrant me the uh, the W. So I get to host this evening's uh, quiz. So I am going to go ahead. Let's see, who did I pick last time to go first? Tom. I picked Tom last time. So I'm going to pick Dan to go first this time, because I'm not a dick. So, Nigel. Now, I got uh, one or two lines from a review. A couple of them I have a couple sentences for, just because these sentences are good. (laughs) But on a scale of 1 to 10, give me what you think it is. If you guys are even space apart, then whoever gets it without going over gets the point. If you get the uh, nail on the head and you get the exact review, you get two points. So, Nigel, first one's to you. Okay. This was done by Rufat Agahedev, 24. I don't know how to pronounce that. He said in November of 2019, solid old school action. Predictable, but interesting. That sounds like a six. Thompson? I'm going to say this is an eight. Ooh, and Tom gets it out the gate. That was a nine star review. Oh, nice. Nice. I suck at this now. I'm just terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Getting in his head already. <laughs> Just don't go for the shutout there, Nigel. Don't go for the shutout. All right. This one was said by CSB201925 in October of 2020. Zero reasons to rate this movie anywhere below 8 out of 10, even with personal preference to things. I, damn it. 
<laughs> now the shoe is on the other foot. <laughs> no reason to rate it. Oh. Did you say higher than an 8 out of 10? Zero reasons to rate this movie anywhere below 8 out of 10. Even with personal preference to things. <laughs> he, he gave it a 10. I'm going to say it's a 10. I will say an 8. Tom on the head. That was a 10 star review. Yeah, that's kind of failing. <laughs> I almost went with 8 as well. It's like, no, this this guy, this human was uh, really into this film. Well, Nigel, this one's to you. This is by Travism447846. He said in December of 2019, too much of the lead trying to act like the Black Panther. He had a hard time with his accent. They do know that his Black Panther accent was an actual... You know what? Never mind. Never mind. Um, read it again one more time. Too much of the lead trying to act like the Black Panther. He had a hard time with his accent. His American accent. I will verify that he was talking about his American accent. Because he's American. Well, I, I get that. I'm just... Yeah, saying. yeah. Seven out of ten. Three. That was a one-star review. Jesus Christ. Wow. Whew. <laughs> I said don't go for the shutout, Dan. Don't go for the shutout. I wasn't going for the shutout. I'm just trying to, like, make sense of these. <laughs> All right. So, Tom, you've got four points. Dan, if you get the next two on the head, you can win. Okay. So, or you, yeah, you can tie it, and then we have the tiebreaker. So... Tom, this one's to you. This was done by Shuby01-12 in April of 2021. He said, Sure, the story's not new, but so what? We see lots of things literally remade. This is its own film, and it is about the craft of making it. I'm going to say a 10-star review. Nigel? What was this one again? Sure, the story is not too new, but so what? We see lots of things literally remade. This is... This it its own film and is about the craft of making it. God, that sentence hurts. It does. Yeah, it it does. does. Who wrote this again? Because I'm going to write him a nasty letter. Shuby01-12. Uh, Shuby01. Oh, my God. You are terrible. You know what? I'm going for broke. I'm going to say this is deceiving. You're get, This is a 9 on 10. You're saying a 9? Yeah. It's a 9-star review. Oh, damn shit! <laughs> the Hail Mary connected, I'll be damned. I was sending the vibes your way. I was just like, Price is right him. Price is right him. Price is right him. Are you on Skype? Are you, like, FaceTiming? Yes. We wanted to give you a good run. <laughs> Alright, so, Dan, this one's to you. This one is said by Gregarious 19712 in July of 2020. This is another tough one. So, uh, on top of that, I'm afraid to say that Patrick Bozeman needs a couple of acting lessons. Patrick Bozeman? <laughs> yep. Whoa! Whoa! Oh! <laughs> He says, I'm afraid to say that Patrick Bozeman needs a couple of acting lessons. Yep. I'm afraid to say that Patrick Bo I hate this guy. <laughs> I hate this more than Shuby from the last one. <laughs> I'm afraid to say that Patrick Bozeman needs acting lessons. Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm going to say th three, three out of ten. Thompson? I'm afraid to mean. Hmm. I think there's more to this one, so I'm gonna say it's actually more of a six. Well, um, that was actually a two-star review. Oh, shit! Damn it! I almost said two. I almost said two. <laughs> I used all my energy channeling the last one to you. Ah, <laughs> uh, I almost said two. I mean, it wasn't a complete shutout, but I beat no. you. <laughs> Yeah, that was a close one. That was uh, four to three. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was going to be one of those deceiving ones where it's like it seems like a lower uh, review, but actually does kind of go on to praise the rest. Like, you know, the rest of the cast and the directing, blah, 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 made this a passable film. Yeah, yeah. Or yep. something. But I win, I win, hm? I get to do the quiz again. Ha, 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 ha. Yep, you got it next week, Tom. Yes. So uh, the bonus question that I actually had was by uh, Xlotic31, he said in July of 2020. The plot line is not good, but I like Chadwick's character. 
At least they broke some common climax patterns, which were satisfactory. <laughs> Climaxing usually is. That would have been to you, Tom. Oh, um, 69. So you're saying a 6.9 or a 7? What? I'm, I'm going to say 7. Okay. Nigel, what would you have said? I would say a 5. Tom would have got it on the head. That was a 7 out of 10. Nice. nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations, Tom. I am so sorry, Dan. I, you know, I just suck at this. I, we should play a different game. What game should we play? Tom, play the music. Welcome back to another bridge building episode of the Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and toll operator. Tom. And if you think my bridge prices are steep, just wait till you get to the other 20 bridges. I tell you, wait, you mean to tell me this movie's not about a bunch of bridges? But I wrote like 20 of these skits. <sighs> um, well, um, I thank you for crossing over with us here at the fire pit. The team's bridging the gap between the first and the second half of this season as the fire pit swings into the first movie of this latest adventure. They're locking things down and on the hunt for the clues that will solve the final mystery at the end of this journey. Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. But speaking of mysteries, let's see how the team is doing on their own investigation. Look, all we need to know is where this guy hangs out. You tell me that, and I'll get you this nice lollipop. I, I um, what? Listen here, scumbag. You tell me where Murdoch is, or I'll personally stick the needle in your arm on your execution day. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, maybe you should calm down there, buddy. I am calm. All right, so give me those lab results. This is going to take a few hours, at least. Well, I need them yesterday. And process those damn soil samples, too. Ugh. Oh, my God! Is that a dead body? Oh, oh, my God. He's, like, dead, dead. It's, it smells so disgusting. <laughs> Clearly the assailant ran past this shrub and down that alley. Uh, that leads to a dead end. I'm leading this investigation, rookie. Where are those samples? They're, they're in the mass spectrometer. I told you it's going to take a few hours. Ugh, man, lab work is really boring. It really is. Intestines. Yeah, yeah, he'd been here for a few days, too. It's quite right. I can tell. V Vicks Vapor Rub, boy, Vicks Vapor Rub. All right, this shipping container was last logged at the Eastwood docks. Pack it up. We're out in five. This dirt sample was brought in by the Harry Shipping Company. Their boat is currently docked at the Eastwood docks. Let's get out there. <laughs> I can't wait to find out what happens next. I'm positively sick with excitement. <laughs> but if you're wanting to get something out of your system, or if you have some advertisements that you want to spew out into the world, or if you just have words that you need to vomit out, then feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just be sure to put fire pit in the subject line, as well as what you're emailing about, whether it's for an ad, a destination recommendation, a journey recommendation that you think we should try, a correction about a past episode, or if you just want to chat, let us know what's going on. From there, we'll read it, take it across the bridge, 
then take it across the next bridge, and then to the other bridge, and then the other bridge, and then the other bridge, and the other bridge, and never respond. Honestly, we kind of lost track of it around the ninth bridge or so. Or maybe it was one of the tunnels. Huh. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com, capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. Well, shoot, it looks like them trolls are after that goats again, so I guess I gotta... Oh, wait, damn it, that doesn't work anymore. Um, that sound means the city's going into lockdown now? Yeah, that's it. That's the ticket. The city's going into lockdown now, so I'm going to stay in and play Marco Polo with some drug runners. So I'll let you get back to the episode. Good save, Tom. Thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck. I really need to vet these skits with the movies I'm watching. Jeebus, please. <laughs> And now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. So I need to know that we got each other's backs tonight because I got a kid at home who doesn't need to wake up without a mother. I never freeze. I just said that. That's kind of like my thing. I don't get that reference. It's from Black Panther. It's right before, it's right before he goes on his first mission in the movie. Yeah, Dan's not saying it with a thick enough accent. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to try to imitate an African accent. I never freeze. Oh, that's from Black Panther. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's one. Let's hey, count them, guys. One bridge. This is where T'Challa went after he was snapped. To Brooklyn? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, good. Okay, yeah, they're practicing proper COVID precautions. Okay, <laughs> good. Good. Wear your mask. Yeah, the guns are there to ensure that people maintain their six feet distance. See, my dumb ass would have left him up there. I just have a feeling. Somebody, like, the other guy calls me downstairs. What do I do? I just leave the guy up there. Like, don't go anywhere. I come downstairs, and the other guy's like, Where, where's the guy? Oh, fuck me. No, I, like, don't worry. I told him not to go anywhere. We have an honor system. Are you who they say you are? The king of Wakanda? Yes. <laughs> two, two bridges. Three, uh, uh, four, four, five, five six bridge. Uh, uh, seven uh, bridge. Seven. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Make one more sports analogy. I like that. J.K. Simmons is channeling Josh. <laughs> this is that good Italian flour, man. That's a double O shit. We're going to make so much bread tonight. <laughs> Sir, I don't think we're robbing the same place. When I said we were getting the white stuff, I didn't mean flour. We're going to make ciabattas and focaccia. Ooh. You can't bury somebody where they stand. I would know. I'm a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Eight. Eight. Nine. Ah, 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 ah. Ten. Stop it. Stop it. All that one is very, very expensive. This isn't a Costco, sir. Hmm. Deal drugs or drive an Uber. Which is the safest one? Hmm. Uh, dealing drugs. There's a hole. Is that a tunnel? <laughs> no, that's a tunnel. Ah, 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 bridge. Ah, ah, ah. You know, Chadwick Boseman did all this, like, studying of Jackie Robinson, hours, days, weeks, months, getting him right, getting the impression from everything. He spent, like, 20 minutes watching a CBS cop drama and said, yep, I got it. Eh, it's possible. He was also shadowing a superhero in order to effectively play Black Panther. <laughs> Oh, God! Whoa. Bashir! What? That is the worst door! That no, he looked through the eye hole. He idiot. shot him through the eye hole. That is dumb. That is so dumb. What is? That everything right there. Shooting a guy through the eye hole? A, a bulletproof door with 15 damn latches and a security camera... And he has a fucking people. <laughs> that uh, that trope is actually yeah. called the idiot ball. Yeah, yeah. You would think you got a camera. Why do you need to look through the people? And they were apparently pounding that door so hard it was denting. And you have a fucking people. 
This film is dumb. Four, th 13. 13. Really threw him under the bus. Oh, I'm good. I'm fine. I'm fine. Wait, hold on. I'm fine. There's a panther in my uh, kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's not a spider. <laughs> I see what you did there. I did too. I saw it. It was good. 14, 15. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> this is not about Cadillacs. Fucking all access. Material bullshit. Says the guy in a three story house on a cop salary. <laughs> he said it wasn't all about it. He didn't say it wasn't about it. Okay. <laughs> This seemed contrived and unnecessary, but okay. <laughs> so we were at eight cops dead, nine, ten, eleven, wait, wait, ten, eleven. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't freeze there. <laughs> Can I at least delete? My internet history. It's just been deleted. <laughs> You're going down, Burns. Every dirty cop in the A5 is going down. Narrator. They didn't. Patrick Bozeman needs to work on his accent. <laughs> and now, back to the episode. Okay, um, so that was 21 Bridges, a movie that Tom and I had not seen yet, but Josh has seen. And so now we're going to start final thoughts off with Josh, who's seen it multiple times now. So, Josh, uh, final thoughts. Well, it was interesting watching it with you guys. Parts that I'd seen it the first time, you guys definitely had comments on the second time or the like this time that I hadn't even I just kind of glanced over, glossed over. There's the term. Well, I I still like the movie. I like the pacing. I like that there isn't a lot of dead space into it. I like the acting. I know you guys said you had some issues with some of J.K. Simmons' dialogue and some of the dialogue. And on the third viewing, I guess I could say that I could understand those grievances against it. But overall, I still really like this film. I think that uh, Chadwick Boseman did a good, a good job. I think that a lot of the dialogue is still good. Obviously, even I came into the movie saying it's not a great film. Um, I think the seven, eight, eight out of ten rating is pretty good for it, or pretty, pretty Actually, accurate. It's more, it's more like a six on ten on average. Is it? Yeah. yeah, whatever it was. Yeah, it's like I think that's a pretty accurate rating for it. Like it's nothing to write home about, but it's something. It's like, oh, this was a fun film. I might pick it up and watch it again. But yeah, like Dan, I knew you guys would pick up on the uh, twist or real early on and put it all together before the end of the film. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they aren't subtle about it at all. No. But, um, yeah, I don't really have anything other to say about that. I'm curious to hear, hear your guys' thoughts on it. But uh, overall, I still enjoy the movie. Um, I probably will watch it again. Thompson, what about you? Your thoughts I am curious about. I I was not glad to watch this film. I was miserable to watch this film. This movie was dumb. This was not fun, dumb film. This was disappointing, dumb. This was bad. Directing was fine. It was fine. Music was all right. But holy shit. I get that it was supposed to be a cop drama, but god damn, did they have to make it such a cop drama? The writing was awful. Just no talent or effort behind this. There were moments I saw like, oh, this could go somewhere fun if they cared, but they didn't. At least to me, it felt like a lot of the moments that happened in the film required people to be dumb enough to allow them to happen. If they used an ounce of sense or anything else or competent writing. Like what? Well, Josh, let's see here. The guy who funneled, spoiler alert for those who actually want to watch this film, Dr. Bashir being the guy who funnels and cleans the dirty money for all the dirty players in the city, who was smart enough to have a door made of bulletproof everything, at least an arm thick with five or nine different kind of latches and a camera to see who's outside his door and has a goddamn fucking peephole. 
what the fuck? They needed that there so you could have the dramatic shoot him through the head through the peephole. Fuck me running. That's when the movie just dropped off. Like, nope, I am done. There is no salvaging this piece of shit film. I will give some credit to Stephen James, who played Michael, the guy who was being chased. I didn't think he was going to be as much of a feature in this film. And I'm sorry I glossed over him in my meta. I thought the other guy, Kitsch, was going to be the main guy. And he was just going to be his other guy. Um, Stephen Miller play, was in the movie Selma. And I hope to hell, going forward, he gets more work. Because he was a goddamn pro with this script. Him and J.K. Simmons and Chadwick Boseman, and Sienna Miller, bless her heart, the stand out in this film, they did their best with this shitty script. I will go on further, but I am feeling like I'm stealing some of Dan's thoughts. Nigel, what do you think of this wretched piece of <laughs> shit film? I don't think it's that bad, but it met my expectations. I expected a solid movie, but nothing spectacular. And I got that. It was it was okay. I've seen way better police procedurals. I've seen way worse, too. I think 56% on Rotten Tomatoes is fair. It, it had some good performances in it. But, uh, Tom, I agree with you. This The script needed a little work. And uh, they did what they could with it. You know, J.K. Simmons and Chadwick Boseman. And, and they, they did what they could with the crappy writing they had but it was crappy writing and there's only so much you can do i don't even want to say this movie was fine it was just it was a movie you know i mean it's like i said it's not the worst one we've seen on this podcast it's not in the dead calm and in pathfinder area but it's uh uh it's it's in it's middle of the road (laughs) like i said 56 (laughs) percent or i think 56 percent on rotten tomatoes is fair I, I, I remember being shocked today or yesterday when I was starting to look up trivia and look up some facts about the movie. And I saw 56% on Rotten Tomatoes. I was like, wow, I thought it was higher than that. This, I thought this movie would get higher than that. And um, no. And rightfully so. <laughs> rightfully so. It's, it's It doesn't have the pulse pounding action of a movie like Lethal Weapon has. But it doesn't have the super serious direction and writing that a movie like Copland or um, The Departed has. Like, it's just... It, it it's just blah. It's it, it's like they tried to copy two recipes and they didn't have all the ingredients for either one. So, uh, like I said, um, better cop procedural movies on both ends of the spectrum with like the lethal weapon with the action heavy gun shooting one liners, that kind of movie. And then like movies like, you know, Copland and um, uh, maybe a movie we'll see later on this journey, uh, Nighthawks, uh, where it's more of a darker police procedural but yeah this movie met my expectations i really can't say much more else about it it's yeah like i'm not in a hurry to see it again it didn't crack any of my top 10 20 30 40 50 60 <laughs> 70 100 movies it, 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 it just didn't it just didn't um and i feel really bad that this was the last movie that chadwick boseman got to make before he died because see, i still like the movie i still uh, was really intrigued especially the first time i got an opportunity to watch it what intrigued you about this film? I don't know. I thought I felt the pacing was good. I felt the performances were good. I never. I, I think you. Uh, I think you're a little uh, harsh on it. Like I think Dan's about is exactly what the, I expected him to get out of it. But uh, I, it's one of those movies. I liked it when I first watched it. But one of Tom has a tendency to nitpick things in films that I don't always agree with the nitpick. But the one nitpick he has about this film, I was thinking the same thing. And that is when Dr. Bashir has the fucking peephole in the steel door. Why? Yeah, he's looking through the camera and then he looks through the peephole. It's like, really, dude? That is the that is only there so he could get shot through the eye. That's the only reason why that's there. That is so contrived. And it's only there because the script says it has to be there. Like, it makes no sense that he has this thick ass door, which by the way, Tom wasn't bulletproof when it was showing that the, the cops were going through it like tissue paper, Yeah, but it was nine millimeters, I might add. So, I mean, you're a money, you're a dirty money cleaner for drug runners and mobsters and hitmen, And yet your door 
it might as well have come from Home Depot. I mean, seriously, it was yeah. pathetic. But like the people, the people only existed so he could get shot through the eye. And I fucking hate when movies do that. It, we call it either the idiot ball or contrived coincidence. Like it's just, it's only there because the script says it needs to be there because he has to get shot through the eye. Well, how's he going to get shot through the eye? Well, he's got a peephole. Yeah. Why would he have a peephole in a steel door that he's got a camera attached to? Makes no sense. Because it'll be cool. Yeah. Yeah. And his acting in that whole sequence, he just looked bored. It's like, I'm just going to fucking die anyways. I'm just here for the paycheck. Mm. Uh, Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. So I do agree with that one nitpick that Tom had, because I was watching that scene going, this is dumb. Why would he have a peephole? Why is his door made of aluminum? (laughs) (laughs) It's strong enough to withstand like nine different cops trying to beat it down. Yeah, it looks like they're like hitting it with their little battering ram thing and it's not going down. And then they just unload on it with their, I remind the audience, nine millimeter rounds, which I know a nine millimeter will kill somebody, but it's not going to go through a steel door, at least not right away. And they're going through it like it's corrugated cardboard. And it was so stupid. Yeah. Me, need I remind you also, he had plenty of open windows. He could have had a sniper scene, but no, they had to have the cool ass bullet scene through the people. Yeah. Ugh. So anyways, that's, that's a nitpick. I totally agree with because there were moments in this movie where the script was just really stupid moments. Moment. Are, are yeah. we in the part long of- moments, Tom <laughs> long moments where the script was stupid. I think we could pick out moments where the script wasn't stupid. Yeah. And, and we'd have it, fingers left over. Yeah. And honestly, it, it kind of sort of ticked a lot of the boxes of cop cliche films. Oh, it did. Definitely you know? it did. <laughs> oh, boy. What are um, some of the ones you guys noticed? By the well, way? the only one they didn't do, and I was half expecting them to do it. The only one they didn't do was, the, of course, the, the dirty cops were in on the, in the, in on the drugs. The... Two guys that killed all the cops were bad guys, but they weren't the bad guys. That's that's another good cliche. The only cliche they didn't hit that I really thought they were going to hit, which prevented me from getting a bingo tonight, was um, I thought they were going to do a twist that the dirty cops had something to do with Chadwick Boseman's father being killed in the as a kid. Like, I thought they were going to come out that, oh, my dad was killed by dirty cops. Or it's the they same. They kind of said early on, like uh, J.K. Simmons, he said, it's like, I didn't know your dad. But I heard he was a good guy. Yeah, but but like, they but they but they um they just at the end of the movie they confirmed that his dad was a cop and he was killed, but he was killed by a random act of violence with someone who was yeah. who was coked up on drugs. It wasn't a dirty cop that killed his dad. It wasn't a friend of the dirty cops. It wasn't the same drugs or the same gang or whatever that killed his dad. It was just it was a random act of violence. That was the only stereotype they didn't tick on. I really thought they were going to come out with the whole. Yeah, no, his the dirty cops or like. JK, oh yeah, I think JK that would have ruined it. For, that that, that would have definitely ruined yeah, it. Yeah, or they would, or the other twist would have been like J.K. Simmons was his dad's partner and let his dad get killed or something like that. That would have been a cliche. I'm glad they didn't. It, I, I, I'm sure, judging by what the rest of the script was like, it was very hard to resist putting <laughs> that in the movie. I I'm glad someone gave him a little restraint and said, no, no, you've, you've put in four, Dave. We don't need six cliches. Okay. Back it up a little bit. You got four, you got four, leave the other two out. So that's it. That's, that's it. Like I said, I had ticked a lot of cop cliche boxes. Oh uh, yes. Oh no. And the other twist was I, I I'm with you, Tom. I expected Sienna Miller to monologue for another five minutes after she was arrested, but she doesn't. Yeah. So again, um, I'm sure it was really hard to uh, not put that in there. Mm-hmm. Um, it definitely seemed like you were tempted, but uh, hats off to the <laughs> scriptwriter for not putting it in there. So <laughs> small moments of competence yeah. in with that kind of restraint, moment. you too could write for Saturday Night Live someday. So <laughs> that's mean, man. <laughs> that's mean. They weren't that bad. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I'm. That's a low blow. I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> We're all tired and grumpy. We've all had long days. I'm. I'm yeah. sorry. That was. That was below the belt. I will, in Rocky fashion, I will keep the gloves up from now on. <laughs> but I, Josh, do you have anything else you want to add? Because I oh, just, I, I will admit, I'm a little disappointed you guys didn't like the movie a little bit more. Not, ex- uh, let me say, I'm not surprised Tom didn't like the movie. Well, I, I didn't, I don't hate it like Tom did, but I definitely didn't like this film. I don't oh, hate it's it. Like, but I, I, it's honestly, like, I was expect, yeah, I was expecting you to come out of it thinking like seven or eight out of ten or 
Because I thought it was a seven or an eight no, out of ten. I, I think a five when and a half I, or a six is fair. Yeah. Um, but honestly, you met at your expectations, and that's even what I said in my opening thoughts. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. It's like, you know, you, you do have your movies that you enjoy, and not everybody shares those. Like, I know the movie Rockstar for me. Um, I don't think I've found many people who like that movie, but I absolutely love that movie. That is a guilty pleasure of mine. Okay. And I'm normally not a Mark Wahlberg fan. Oh, I love that film. I thought it was great. You're, the people that are telling you that movie sucks are wrong. You know that movie is based on a true story, right? I do, I do. But I just, like a lot of people who, because I think that gets like a five out of six too on IMDb. Because I've been, I've been a fan of that movie since it came out in what, like 2002? Oh, 2000, like 2001? Yeah. yeah, and I remember people, like I'd be uh, talking to people and they'd always be like, oh, that movie sucked. Or that's like not a great movie. But it was like in my top ten for the longest time. And I love that movie. Yeah, I mean, everyone's got a movie they like that not a lot of other yeah. people like. And that's fine. Like I said, this movie's not Pathfinder or no, yeah, Washbuckler like not, bad. Not but Dead Combat. So it might be some people's niche. May not be others. But it's interesting. We all have a three very different. Like I would give it a, like between a seven and an eight. Dan would give it between a five and a six. And Tom would give it a number. <laughs> Probably a three or a four. You know, uh, like I said, this movie was stupid, but Aquaman was stupid too. But Aquaman is fun, stupid. Yeah, yeah I think uh, I, I see what you guys are saying. Like, I feel like, especially watching it with you guys, I see your grievances with it. Especially, I was thinking when, uh, was it Dan, you or was it Tom when comparing it to Lethal Weapon? Me. I think this movie could have been a lot more fun or enjoyable had it had more humor. It's like it took itself too seriously. Yeah, like, Honestly, the best scene in the film is right before he's he's asking them to lock down the city and he's having that banter back and forth with the other cops and the FBI agents. That dialogue was awesome. If the movie had been more of that, okay, yeah, I, I can get on board with that. Unfortunately, the scene before that was J.K. Simmons getting a little too wordy and a little too like quasi heavy with the dialogue or the, the dialogue was supposed to be heavy, but it's not it's it, yeah, it's, it's not registering. It's not clicking. Mm. And unfortunately the movie was more of that and not the banter in the scene later. Like it's, yeah, it, it, that, that was my, my thing with it. Like, you know, you, you get a plate of food and this one unfortunately had way too many Brussels sprouts on it. So I, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not wrong. I think I said this in the watch, but watching this story, this is a movie that should have been made in the late seventies, early eighties with, Clint Eastwood, you know, playing Chadwick Boseman's character. He'd still have that like dirty era of Hollywood. So you could do like the grim and gritty story with like that dour, pessimistic ending that I was kind of hoping this film would do. And it would have worked perfectly, especially contrasting Clint Eastwood's dirty, hairy, you know, loose cannon cop. Here he is like regarded loose cannon but he's trying to play it by the books and actually get to the bottom of things with this great conspiracy. I think this film neat was, should have been made 30 or 40 years ago. Yeah. But Josh, don't apologize for liking it. Everyone's got an opinion and it's all good. So, I mean, you and I went back and forth on true grit the whole time we recorded that. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but yeah, I, I've got nothing else to say about this film. I kind of, I think I'm repeating myself at this point. Um, what about you guys? You got any other final thoughts? I am very, uh, ah, I had an idea, a thought, but it didn't coalesce. <laughs> okay. Well, um, did, what about you jo- or Tom? Do you have any final, final thoughts? If I kept going, it'd just be fine tuning my bitching. And <laughs> it's, Sharp, it. Sharpening it to a fine point. I've beat the horse. It's already dead. All right. We're circling the drain. Well, yeah. on, let's, on, let's not get clogged. <laughs> well, on to the next dead horse. That's tonight's show. As a reminder, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, or wherever fine podcasts are sold or traded. Uh, our regular episodes are Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Please like and subscribe on whatever platform you choose to listen to us on. We really appreciate it. It helps us grow. Please leave a review for the podcast. Uh, if you do that uh, enough times, we come up on searches. So if someone is actually searching movie reviews or movies, uh, th- something about 21 Bridges, uh, we, we would come up on searches like that. So someone could listen to our episode about this movie so uh please leave a review we really do appreciate it 
And be sure to join our Discord as well. You can find a link in our episode's description or go to discord.me slash firepit. You'll also get no- notifications on the show. Um, and like I said, you can engage in conversations with uh, us and other members and um, possibly extra trivia and stuff on the uh movies and whatnot just depending on what it is it's a fun time we enjoy getting in there and uh chatting here and there and talking about various aspects of the movies but if you want to get into us on a personal level you can always email us at curtain call entertainment inc at gmail.com um that sexy guy in the interspersal tells you more about it if you want to send us a long message short message happy message sad message it's all up to you also, be sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at FirePitCCE, both linked in this episode's description as well. Dan, do better on Twitter. I'm trying. Uh, I would personally like to shout out Peggy, the old school friend of the channel. Thank you very much for listening. I uh, hope you're enjoying your camp out this weekend with friends. And also a uh, shout out to us, actually. Um, we... Or a little late to the game. In fact, we're closer to another number than we are to this one. But we did find out we hit a thousand downloads a while back. So yay us! Um, and I think we're close to what? How many now, Josh? We hit like a thousand downloads several months ago. I think I actually shouted it out in an old episode. You may have. Did I? You, you may have. Yeah, we're at. Uh, we're actually approaching two thousand downloads now. Oh, okay. Um, cool. I think we just uh, surpassed seventeen hundred downloads. Just a. Uh, couple weeks or a little short while ago we're past 1700 downloads nice so we're very we're uh under 300 away from uh hitting that 2000 download mark mm. nice nice well so if you want to help us meet that number and exceed it faster you know download it more and you know you could always go back and uh marathon episodes too. listen to whole journeys in a single sitting i, I definitely recommend some of our other sh- ones like uh our superhero one for the superman or flying high through the hero's journey, a uh, journey where our destination film was Superman. Yeah. That was a fun one. That was a good one. That was a good one. I personally say go back and download our first episode because the quality on Tom, that one, stop. Uh, just stop. Just shut up right now. Shut up. No. Those episodes didn't happen. They do not exist. And by <laughs> first episode, he means episode six, Top Gun, which incidentally, yesterday was the one year anniversary of. Yay, go us again. Uh, what about you, Tom? Any shout outs? Um, I want to shout out, speaking of, you know, podcasts and making sure it gets out there, I want to shout out Podbean, where we host this podcast. Podbean, of course, uh, hosting other podcasts such as Critical Role, if you, for those D&D types out there. And we are proud to be amongst those that they keep. Find us at firepit.podbean.com. Also shouting out Zencaster, which has been our recording platform for a couple months now, ever since Skype um, shit the bed. Um, it's a free tool that you can use online that has, you can pay for features, but you don't have to. And uh, They're not paying for this plug, neither them or Podbean. But they're awesome, and we say you should give them a try. And speaking of giving us a try, I would like to shout out uh, at least one of our Facebook followers, Morris. Morris, thank you for listening to us here on the podcast, joining several hundreds of people on Facebook. I'm trying to keep the shout outs short, um, so I'm going to just do one Facebook follower at a time. Still got a lot to get through. So thank you for joining you, Morris and for all those also on Facebook I have yet to get to. Appreciate you popping in, whether just to keep an eye on us or listen to us regularly. We appreciate you helping to keep the fire pits burning. Josh, what about you? I love how he says he's keeping it short, but he's still long-winded. I would like to shout out uh, my wife for putting up with me. Last night was our date night, but we had our table read yesterday. And uh, she's like, gave me a hard time for doing that on our night. Or her night, she said. Yeah, she wanted a marathon Lucifer. So <laughs> she was a little mad at me because she she couldn't marathon Lucifer. And to Josh's wife, he was really disappointed that he couldn't marathon Lucifer with you. <laughs> it's all we heard the whole time. Like, I wonder what Lucifer's doing. But uh, no, shout out to my wife, love her. She's awesome. And uh, shout out to Sync Lounge and um, Plex, as always. Still managing to be awesome. Haven't had to change those platforms. Like we tried to use Plex's play together feature but that sucked 
So Sync Lounge, we went back to like within seconds because Sync Lounge does a great job of keeping us all in sync. It uh, shares my Plex library and allows the three of us to watch a movie in sync at the same time. And uh, honestly, we've been having very minimal interruptions with it lately. Very few technical difficulties. Granted, that may be partially because I threw on an SSD to our very to our movies that we're watching on this one. But regardless, shout out to Sync Lounge and Plex for hosting on our uh, evenings together and making this podcast possible. Excellent. Well, so that does it for tonight's show. Next week, we go from the Big Apple to where are we going, Tom? I think we're going to the Big Freezer, Nigel. Brr, it's cold outside. It's cold outside every day. That's right, we Chuck Chuckers. It's Groundhog's Day. Wrong journey. Wrong oh. journey. Oh, shit. Um, we're going to that one uh, English... Uh, uh, what, what type of word is it? Uh, with the clown and then the kids. I can't think of it. It? it? I can't think mm, of it either. It's more like a thing. We're going to a thing next week. We're not doing an it this time? No, we're doing, we're doing a thing? A, yeah, we're doing a thing next week. A thing. What What thing are we doing? The thing. Yeah, what's thing? No, 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 no. Like, you know, the thing. The, the thing that we're doing. Yeah, that's what we're asking. What thing? The thing. Like, that's what we're watching next week. The thing. Who's on first? <laughs> yes. Yes, the thing. That's what we're watching next week. The thing. Okay, we're going to figure out what thing we're watching. Um, John Carpenter's The Thing. Oh, why didn't you say so? The thing John Carpenter made. <laughs> Looking yes. forward to it. You think he calls his penis that? Until then, I've been Dan. I've been Tom. And I've been Josh. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Good luck out there. And just when things were heating up, the trail goes cold. All right, well, let's pack it in, guys. We could try again tomorrow or something. Oh, look! A clue! Wait, I think I found something. What are you doing? <laughs> it's a perp! Get her! <laughs> Man, this is a crime scene! We just heard you. Uh, do not talk to the cats, please, while we're trying to conduct an investigation. <laughs> She's tainting the evidence! Yeah. Yeah. You're, gonna, you're gonna taint the evidence and ruin my chain of custody. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying all that noise a freaking first year law student can get this thrown out. I'm saying all the law and order lines today. Anyways. <laughs> Do we want to take it from the top? No, I think we can take it from... Uh, um... Tom, oh, look, a clue. Yeah. <laughs>